See, it's a difference. Can we get, I told you it was too bright. Can you darken out a little bit? Welcome to the Gilchrist Experience. Uh, welcome back to the show. My brother, Graham Weatherspoon, has been off making a million dollars. <laughs> Just a few. <laughs> <laughs> Just a few million, all right? But I, I'm sure you got something out of that opening. Um, uh, the serious mystery, uh, where um, the gods came from, as you mm -hmm. saw by this opening. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us, um, <laughs> Sinke Brass, yes. son of Alambe Brass, <laughs> I understand that you were teaching this subject. Yeah, well, I, I was once, a, when I first finished graduate school, I was a middle school teacher. And when I was a middle school teacher, um, I taught science. So one of the things that children need to see reflected to ha really have an interest in learning are people who look like them doing great things and having advanced knowledge of things that really turns them on. So uh, as a middle school teacher, although it was not part of the official curriculum, I was a big student per se study of the late Ivan Van Sertema, ah, who mm -hmm. compiled the books Blacks in Science, Ancient right. and Modern. Mm -hmm. And when reading it, he had these three sections on um, Sirius star system. And I looked at that and I was like, wow, I can give this as extra credit. I can infuse this into the curriculum and give these to these young, uh, mostly African-American and Latino minds and let them see greatness coming from people who look like them. So once I, I made those Xeroxes and, made, and you know, made it available to them to read, they were blown away by the excerpts of what it was quoted that the Dogon had done what they knew far in advance, a long time before modern sciences. I mean, we're talking, if our viewers who are watching the Gilchrist report just saw the report that we opened up with, it says a few years. No, it was actually centuries. We're talking right. <laughs> 1300 centuries, you know. I mean, and they're, you know, because they knew this information in such detail and you know, have had all this information confirmed, it was very difficult for people to dispute. Although, what I found in my time is that so many people, despite what they were seeing in front of them, could not accept the fact that this information had come from what they consider a primitive group, the Dogon of mm -hmm. Mali, mm -hmm. um, who were first to have this information. <laughs> you know, even whether it's NASA, mm -hmm. whether it's the guy who was the science guy of the time, Carl Sagan, They've all mm -hmm. been on record saying some pretty derogatory things about the Dogon. Right. Like they have no business knowing this information. And you know, they've been very dismissive of the information that um, even people who are supposed to be against the idea of aliens have come and said, no, aliens must have come here and give them this knowledge. They could not wrap their head around the fact that a quote unquote group that they had considered primitive, the Dogon, Mm -hmm. had such advanced knowledge of stars. You can star only, uh, what they mm -hmm. say in here, that mm -hmm. the, the gods of Egypt, mm -hmm. who are, you know, the tribe of Sirius, are the tribe of Dogons, mm -hmm. actually ancient Egyptians. Mm -hmm. They migrated from Egypt. And the whole mm -hmm. point that the gods of Egypt were, came from the Sirius mystery. Mm -hmm. This is a known fact in mm -hmm. Egyptology. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but the point in the beginning of this opening, uh, where they talk about the gods coming mm -hmm. from Sirius. Now, what, what uh, revelation does that make to you as far as well, I mean, Egyptology? Or if you, even if you Egypt? notice, they put quote unquote gods in, mm -hmm. in parentheses because we have to take into account how this information really got into the mainstream per, per se. Um, the Dogans had this knowledge for a very, very long time. And it was in 1931, which two French anthropologists right, uh, yeah. studied and lived yeah. among them and right. got the understanding that these people, they had a dance that they danced the orbit to. Um, they were so, their culture was infused with everything about the, uh, the Sirius B star yeah. system. Because mm -hmm. what people forget, 
don't recall is that although we say serious system actually the dancing attribute was to the smaller star which really couldn't be seen which is a, what they call a dwarf star Sirius B system right. which was right connected right next to it and they had information about that so in science what we teach about these dwarf stars is that they're very heavy very dense I mean mm -hmm. their gravitational pull would crush us crush any you couldn't Move. Walk I mean, you couldn't there. survive yeah. there and everything. So they knew. They, but they had a saying that if we took every human being on Earth, and we tried to leverage it and, and move it, they couldn't budge the star. And this is true about any dwarf star, anything that dense, any sun which you know uh, is considered a dwarf star would be that dense. We and know the from, bewilderment yeah. of most scientists is was how a, a native tribe in like the middle of nowhere, nowhere. Mm -hmm. could know these things about the planetary system. Mm -hmm. But not only is it in the middle of the nowhere, because we can look at race. If we, if we know that Gaimed is a moon from one of Jupiter's moons, mm -hmm. um, the Chinese had discovered Gaimed, which was this moon, mm -hmm. 1,300 years before Galileo. Mm -hmm. And they, like, even for the Chinese, they wondered, how did they get this knowledge of mm -hmm. this, this moon before Galileo? They had theories, well, the Asians have very dark eyes, and they, <laughs> you know they had also. I mean, they also, of course, said that about the Dogon. But they had all sorts of theories trying to wonder how did Jupiter, you know, only concurrently are we understanding that Jupiter ha had many moons. And it was uh, the Chinese astronomical mm. astrological society. It was a scientist named Gan Deng. You know, he found, and they questioned they questioned that, but then. It, Again, these things have been confirmed to be true. So what I find is that it's something what we call thinking out the box. Mm -hmm. You know, so these discoveries and these things happen because they, people have a different approach to understanding or seeing the world. We look right across in Kenya. Kenya has one of the oldest and greatest astro astro astronomy, astronomical sort of uh, buildings, you know, it's mostly in ruin now, but they had advanced information of the solar system and stars way before. So what happened was archaeologists went to Kenya and they saw that almost like ruins, like Stonehenge rocks and mm -hmm. these sort of structures, if, if you will, were laid out in a certain way. So they were saying to themselves, like, did they have a telescope here? And of course we found later, yes, they had a telescope which allowed them to see far in advance of Europe that the Kenyans had a telescope. And what they began to do was reconstruct from the um, structures where they were at and say, okay, how can we prove this? The Earth, of course, mm -hmm. as we know, the Earth orbits on its, on its axis, mm -hmm. you know, so we had two spins of the earth you know what I mean it's orbit and on its axis that's how we get our different days and we get of course the year uh, orbit being one time around the Sun that's a year you know and on its axis that's a day and of course that's helped us figure out the modern-day calendar and that's what the Dogon had better than anybody ever <laughs> I remember there was a NASA scientist at the church where I grew up in and he came to visit. And this is in the early stages of the space program. And he said that the Gregorian calendar, that we have 365 and a quarter days, when placed into man-made computers, mm -hmm. the calendar was rejected. So here is an instrument built by man that is rejecting the information that man was giving to it in order to determine the exact position of a moving object placed mm -hmm. around the Earth by man. When they launch a satellite, they need to know if it's going to collide with something else mm -hmm. that's orbiting the Earth. And there are literally over 10,000 satellites mm -hmm. orbiting the Earth now. So they put in the 365 days, and it, it rejected it. Mm -hmm. And they were scratching their heads, well, you know, this should work, because we know mm -hmm. the Earth is 365 and a quarter days, leap years, mm -hmm. every four years. And he remembered something that was in the scripture. Mm -hmm. In a battle where the Israelites were told to hold up the hand of Joshua. If they mm -hmm. didn't hold up the hand of Joshua, they would lose the battle. Mm -hmm. And in holding Joshua's hand up, the sun stood still 
for a period of time. I don't remember mm. what it was, but it's written in Scripture that mm. Joshua's hand was held up. And it's not only written of in Scripture, mm. it's written of in the Aztecs, where mm. on a given day, the sun didn't move for a number of hours. Mm. It's not only written in the Aztec writing, it's not only written in biblical text, it's written in other texts, and it was noted astrologically around the world. When they went back and the scientists went back to the, to the book of Joshua mm -hmm. or, or Exodus, went and looked at notations mm -hmm. and put in the calculations from the biblical calendar and the computer accepted it. And that's, mm -hmm. what been, that's what NASA has been working off of since then. The mm -hmm. ancients truly had knowledge and wisdom that we don't have. They, they mm -hmm. had it, not aliens, mm -hmm. the ancients. All right? Mm. They had the ability Did and the, the knowledge. Did come from this planetary system? No. Mm. I don't believe in that. You I believe mean, that uh, our ancestors you think, uh, KG built. is a serious mystery? I don't believe. I said I don't believe mm. that. Mm -hmm. I believe that. Does, that, that How many times mm. you going to ask me? <laughs> well, let's play the piece again. <laughs> you can play the piece, but one second. Let me finish You've my been statement. Away. <laughs> You've been away a while. I believe that the ancients mm. had far more wisdom and knowledge in the natural sciences that we have today. When, I, I when, when they built the Aswan Dam, they had to move the tombs of the pharaohs to an elevation 100 feet higher up as they mm -hmm. flooded that area where Luxor mm -hmm. and the libraries were. We did not have cranes to lift one stone. Right. Nimrod was the first city builder. So if we don't have a crane that can lift one stone, how did they build it? One th true thing is that the ancients, just as the Dogon in Grauye's works and writing about the Dogon, they knew about the Series B star system. Mm -hmm. They knew about black holes. Mm -hmm. They could calculate the position of every star in the heavens and how long it would take for that star to return to the exact spot in the heavens. Mm -hmm. They did mm -hmm. that without computers. Yeah. And this information was given them by the NOMO. Mm. Alien beings coming from the planet. I don't believe system. in alien yeah. beings. Yeah. I believe in human beings that yeah. were knowledgeable well, well, let's and see far we knowledgeable than we are today. That's too bright, man. Mm. Oh my God. Turn it yeah. down, please. <laughs> uh, let's go to the video, Jay. Uh, the, the second one we're running. All right? A little darker. This is too bright. God, what are you doing to me? Well, <laughs> while we wait, uh, I understand uh, exactly uh, what you mean, but I think that's the tendency of European scientists when faced with information that they don't have an answer to, to place it on. Just theories. A, yeah, alien beings, even a you lot of. You don't believe in extraterrestrials? I believe in extraterrestrials, but I, with this, I'm with Graham. I don't believe that, I believe that the Dogon had this information not because any aliens gave it to them. Well, that's what they say in the piece. Yeah, but that's they they're just an opinion. Yeah, yeah. And Again. so the Mayans say so, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but a lot of times if we look at these indigenous populations, a lot of times it's also a misinterpretation of what, the, like, what the Mayans are saying when they say the gods you know, um, because their religious and spiritual concepts are sort of, they sort of don't fit with what we have today in terms of, so when they say um, the gods, you know, that's not necessarily these gods from somewhere else, meaning it's some outside of this world. Um, but in, you know, in, in... So how did the Dogons get this information? And that's just it. They, their science and their approach to getting information, the information is outside of the box. No more. They, we, we know that they study the stars in the they skies. They got it no. from extraterrestrials. That's the point. Graham, no, you might me, not believe yeah, it, but it's yeah. been proven. It's not been right, proven. Play the piece. <laughs> it's not been proven. It's a theory. I'll prove it right here. The okay. theory is not proof. Right here. You're just in time to argue. Good. Let's argue. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know that this is fact? No.
Still too bright. Turn the iris down, would you? Welcome back. Um, my wife's uh, home injured. I hope you're watching, darling. Did you hurt her? <laughs> no, she you hurt her. I'm gonna call and find out. My, my baby. <laughs> <laughs> if the wife's not happy, I'm. I, there's no life, man. Kitty, that's the first principle. But what we're saying here, we're arguing about whether extraterrestrials exist. My brother Graham doesn't believe it. But I, I said extraterrestrials <laughs> didn't build this. Right. I'm not saying they can't be. Right. I'm saying they didn't build this. Well, I'm this. just saying extraterrestrials came from the planet Sirius. Well, I'm not saying They're called that. Nemo's, and the Dogons <laughs> believe this. I thought Nemo was a fish. Yeah, fish in like the Walt a Disney, reptilian. In the Walt Disney movie. The, wait a minute. Reptilians. Hey, run, the, run another piece, and we'll show you what the Dogons say about the Nomo, who actually visited Earth from this planet system, Sirius. Just because some people say something or have a, um, a folklore or whatever, doesn't make right. it so. Whether yeah. it's Dogon, whether it's the Greeks, exactly. whether it's the Roman, yeah. doesn't make it so. Right. Doesn't make it so. There, yeah. are, there is all even, types of folklore wise men mm -hmm. like around the world, wrong, you know. Folklore <laughs> around the world. So you, as, as you up, should Graham. say, are you, do you believe up. in leprechauns too? Listen up. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Now we got to prove to Graham that extraterrestrials <laughs> exist. Okay. Take it to the video. Give me the video again. Should the Hogan be contaminated by human contact, he must be killed. Away from the clamor of village life, in caves and rock shelters, the teachings of the Hogan are renewed. Uh, we're being sabotaged. <laughs> you know? See what you bring back, Graham? Maybe it's the Nomo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or well, Nemo, or whatever. Well, you know, what were you off doing? Uh, yeah. Can't <laughs> say. <laughs> <laughs> Can't say. Oh, my goodness. We've got spies among us. Okay. Tell us what you know about the Nemos. Well, it's not so much about the Nemos. I, as you know, Brother Winston, I'm basically of the position that no foreign aliens did any of this. This was our ancestors and the great sciences. But we're from it, the stars. You know, that's a, um, that's a so, totally different belief that the Dogon, although ancient, believe, but it's not corroborated throughout other African cultures throughout, even the Kenyan Aren't the twin Dogons uh, ancient Egyptians? No, oh, the Dogon are from Mali, the area known as Mali. In fact, the... Um, the area from uh, which we call Timbuktu, which is the first and greatest civilization uh, to ever exist, this is the area in which their foundation, their foundation is laid upon from a geographical standpoint. You know, but I, I'm not handing off these great works to any aliens, <laughs> uh, anything outside of our doing or our work. In fact. When I said I used to give my students this, if it would for them in their even in their readings, if they had interpreted it as aliens did it, it's not as empowering for them. You know, well, they, what's the story they of read the it in the they read Where did it, they well, get this information? Well, that is the mystery that for one that we have to accept from them and did from Did you read the yes. serious mystery of yes, K G Temple? Yeah, well, not outside of that. More so, I I read the um, anthropological notes describing what happened, how this whole story developed in over the 25 years, in which basically the French anthropologists became Dogon. I mean, this is not like they, you know, you sometimes hear this anthropologist went there. They there six months, 18 months. We're talking 25 years. In fact, the when French Brawley French? died, Brilliant. over yeah. 250,000 people um, came to his funeral, 250,000 Africans in that area. He was so immersed and they understood so much in the culture uh, of what was happening and this information that they knew. 
and he never attributes it to aliens. He attributes it to their study of the stars. In fact, if we go to New Mexico and we look at the large disk array systems, which you see mm. the movies like Contact, and all they're doing is really studying the stars through another means. They're just up there. I mean, nothing moves a lot of time the whole year. They won't get nothing. Then once, but maybe they get one little beacon. They're like, wow, you know, we, we hit something or we contacted something. So, you know, getting evidence or getting contact with things from outside of the solar system, the Milky Way galaxy, that's not an easy, that's not an easy thing to do. And I don't take that lightly to just say, aliens came and brought this to us. Well, it's a you fact. Know. No, well, it's I not, don't believe it. You can't so establish that as a fact. As a right. fact. Well, yeah. It's a theory. I mean, a theory a is not a fact. You know, you I mean, can't listen what, to me. You know, you're not what, gonna I, what to I was going to show in here, um, being that uh, you and Graham was t talking about whether it's a fact or not, I was going to go to the exact area in uh, Havlin's work, which he, he talks about what the Dogon um, have said about this outside of you know their findings and what their own belief system is. But I'll say this, even if it was their belief system, does it make it, 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 even if it was their belief system that aliens brought it to them, that doesn't mean for me extraterrestrial. I mean, that, that's a very lofty claim. For example, you know what Graham mentioned, I, when I, I was really dumbfounded, when I, I was in Ireland one time visiting a friend and to find, you know, modern Ireland, did like 70% of people believe in leprechauns. 70% <laughs> of the population. For me, they like, because you're not from here and you don't understand it, you know. So there are certain things that are cultural about a belief system that people take on. The rest of us, what we call edict, we like, that's ridiculous. There's no such thing as leprechauns. But 70% doesn't mean those people are stupid. It's just that they have a adapted and absorbed cultural norms as part of their experience and they see it to be true. They don't, the ma overwhelming majority of them don't divorce themselves from the fact that they are leprechauns, that they b actually believe in leprechauns. And I was very shocked to find that common people who you consider intelligent, you would meet, you would ask them about leprechauns, yeah, leprechauns exist today. All this knowledge of, that we all are aware of, you know, a lot of people don't believe in ghosts. But yeah, but I, th I think that's a that's a different thing because when we're talking about what? ghosts, we're, we're not. It's not about scientific we're proof. What are leprechauns? They're not it's, ghosts. They're not ghosts. They're not purported to be ghosts. Yeah. What are they purported yeah, to be? They're supposed to be little creatures yeah, that run and they, around and do whatever they do. They they, they hide things and they they have a, a like whole elves. bunch. Yeah, right. gnomes. Right. But uh, if you like, take that whole like thing, Santa Claus? right? So if you take the idea, a bigger, a bigger elf. Right. <laughs> so if you take that idea to somewhere in Africa or South America about elves, they look at you like you're crazy. All right. So the both of you yeah. don't believe in extraterrestrials. It's not that, that, that it? it's we don't believe that extraterrestrials brought the Dogon knowledge of the But that's what the Dogon people. say. Yeah. Well, does I'm not, it does it? Perhaps this piece will clear it up. I had another okay. one too. That in, the, in the meantime, I'm gonna, guys I'm talk gonna, about where they got this knowledge. Okay. And, and I'm, can you play in that the piece? Meantime, I'll find for you exactly what they said in here. It's a hectic day today. Away from the clamor of village life in caves and rock shelters, the teachings of the Hogan are renewed. that in a move. Next week, you watch. I have had a cold today. See, when you try to tell something really important, all sorts of hecklers come in, your best friends, they don't believe that. They try to yeah. give you some real knowledge and the wisdom just disappears. When one, when one applies themselves to study, which is what the Dogon did, they were extensive observers. Of what? Mm. How did they see this stuff? Of the stars, of heavenly you bodies. You can't see Sirius B. 
Susan can I, can I finish what I have to say <laughs> okay. without listening to your comment, which is trying to counter what I haven't even said yet? <laughs> well, you've been aware they, That's why you can't have a conversation, because you're <laughs> talking, you're not listening. It takes one to listen, one to talk, and then one to Definitely talk and hear one all to this? listen. You hear, okay? you hear this, And I'm going to call her and see if you beat her up. I'm going to find out. <laughs> no, I, why would I beat my wife? Are you kidding? <laughs> Through ardent oh, observation and study, simple observation, you learn things, all right? The Dogon were charting the stars over thousands of years. Thousands of years. How were they charting? They knew. How were they charting it? Can I finish my <laughs> statement? No, I want you to answer the question. I'm not answering your question. It? I'm making a statement. All they right. knew about black holes thousands of years ago, and they wrote about it. Modern man didn't know about black holes until the 20th century the late 20th century, and dark matter, which we're just finding out about, all right? These men applied themselves to a science, to a system. It's just like saying, well, how did the Egyptians build the pyramids? Mm -hmm. That's a system that we don't know, that has been lost. Maybe one day someone can figure it out, but no one has as yet, all right? I'm not attributing the intelligence of the ancients, which is beyond the intelligence of modern man, to an alien. I'm not attributing it to some theory that some Europeans came up with because they can't attribute it to what black people were doing mm -hmm. 5, 10, 15,000 years ago. When my son was in Iraq, he was standing at a water clock that was invented by an Iraqi scientist over 3,000 years ago. It runs on water over 3,000 years, and it's to the very second. He didn't get that from an alien. No, he didn't. <laughs> and this scientist that was in Iraq invented a number of things. And there were things that were invented by non-Europeans oh. that are credited to Europeans. Right? When I was in the Gambia, I saw things in the Gambia. For instance, the belt that they wear, the window washers wear, yes. years ago in public mm -hmm. school, the mm -hmm. custodian would be, that's from Africa. Mm -hmm. They used that to get up and down the trees mm -hmm. in the 1800s. But I'm sure some white guy saw that. They brought that back here <laughs> and said, oh, I, I just thought of something. Yeah. He copied it. <laughs> you know? But when you're given to the study of science, when you're given to the study of mathematics, you talk mm -hmm. about Euclidean geometry. Ptolemy calculated the circumference of the earth standing in mm -hmm. Alexandria long before Jesus was born, and he was only off by 16 miles or something like that, using mm -hmm. Euclidean geometry, mm -hmm. all right? These people were not stupid. And when the further you go back in time, the closer you get to original man who was far superior than the present day man. For them to build and do what they did in that time without electricity, without mm -hmm. diesel, without hydro, well, hydraulics, Archimedes gave us the Archimedean screw. Mm -hmm. How do you think they did it? When you think, when you think, that's how inventions are made, whether it's a computer or anything else. You think about what is needed, and then you come up with an idea to develop something mm -hmm. to meet the need. That's innovation. And whether it's inventing the wheel. We're talking about building the pyramids. Building the mm -hmm. pyramids, building a building, anything. Well, we're talking about building the pyramids. We're talking about ancient Egypt. We're talking about the theory of ancient Egyptian, the serious <laughs> mystery, which I've shown many a day that the Dogons believed the Nemos brought them this information. And the Europeans yes. believe that the world was I'm not flat. talking about the U.S. Wait, <laughs> I'm not talking belief about the Belief systems are belief systems. I'm so not making wrong. fun of it. So the, wrong, there are ridiculous. people that believe the world was flat for thousands of years. And there are people mm -hmm. today that are espousing the fact that the earth is still flat. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a serious dialogue they're yeah. having now that the earth is Did flat. Did you study That's the Dogon? Yes. In fact, and I want to read to you something that the touches on this Where did from the NASA. Where get the information? From observation. And that's what also... How are they seeing this serious you can, mystery? You, well, I'll, I'll, read, I'll read to you, no, Graham, it's, a, a it's, quick it's, it's so point, fortunate that, that a, a this is happening. A quick point to what um, is being, was being said here. 
Um, Marcel Grohl and Jermaine Dietrichland said the Dogon astronomer priests stay up all night and watch the sky. They watch from the caves and from the rooftop terraces of their home. Their dark eyes would then be extremely dark adapted, in other words, very light sensitive, so they would be able to make use of natural foresights and hindsights into their observations. Now, that's one note. Also, when we come down to, according to astronomer Michael Burns of NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, long-term optical observations have revealed information concerning the star's orbit. If it is truly as it appears part of the Sirius system and another characteristic of dwarf Nova-like supermaximum events, at a supermaximum, the star's magnitude, which was at 8.6, very bright, could mean the Dogon astronomers could have seen it in the past, in 1300 A.D., and recorded it. Okay, a super of, of that magnitude, you could see it with the natural eye, especially where they're located at. Sirius B. Yes. That's what, it's, that's what NASA even says here. in 1950. It doesn't make a difference. If you're not looking for it, you can't see it. But if you're a star watcher and this is what you do, this is part of your you specialty. you can't see this with the naked eye. Well, actually, they proved that you can. Not only did NASA prove did it, the Chinese read? proved it. Because the Chinese, as I said, they're... But did they're, you read the, the book? Yes, and I've got this one right here with the notes from both of those societies. The Chinese said this is how they were able to see Dramadea which 1,300 years before Galileo. A scientist there saw it with the naked eye. I'm amazed. Yeah, with the naked eye. And, you know, that, that's, been, that's been documented in here. I mean, part of our amazement is because we're stuck into the idea that you need a super telescope. Even now, they're saying that Dogon, they must have had some sort of telescope. The Kenyans, well, other people who accept the Kenyans, they said Kenyans had a huge telescope. You don't telescope. believe this information was brought to them? No. No, I believe I'm, you I'm believe on. I'm they on got the page. through watching the stars. I believe that this is yeah, this is part of their well, their uh, high quote unquote priest system. We're gonna have Booker T. Yeah. Coleman come in and explain all this. Thing. Okay, and uh, you know this is part of what they do, and this is part of their you know every society. When we talk about even the ancient Egypt, it's not like every ancient Egyptian knew all of this high intellect stuff. It was the priest, the the. Right. learned and erudite of that society, which the we make The magic of the for. Egyptians are, is not, not well known to most folks, because they don't mm. believe in extraterrestrial. Were the Egyptians <laughs> extraterrestrials? Is that yeah. what you're yes, saying? Yes, they were. No, they, no. Were, they were <laughs> black <laughs> people right. born on this planet, Winston. Yeah. They didn't come no, they here from somewhere. They're the black planet. people that were born here well, and well, built a civilization. Well, are you? All right? Next, you you'll be saying fans? Barack Obama is right. an alien. So you know? I, I want to no, say, <laughs> come on. <laughs> well, now we have our, our black our people can't build anything. <laughs> they got to be aliens to come here to build something. We're but black people can't build anything. We're all creatures of the universe. Let, let, I want to read to you. Creatures an interesting, of the universe. I'm not, I'm not from the, uh, there. I'm born here. This is where right. I was created. Right here. This mm -hmm. part of you. This part, your human part. The human but part. But your spirit you, body, soul, and spirit comes from God. It doesn't come mm -hmm. from the universe. Well, the gods came from Sirius. The gods don't, uh, please. It's the beginnings of creation, the serious <laughs> mystery. I'm not talking about a mystery. You, you, that's what uh, you got, well, a mystery. Well, you don't have a fact, you have a mystery. And well, when you have a mystery, you, you don't have the information. Prove it now. You don't hmm. have the information. Well, it's good that you come home. I'm glad at, to be at back. Right, <laughs> in the right time. See, so well, you yeah. can be taught a little something not while you were gone. Look, as Einstein said, there's no one way of knowing. You know what I mean? People come into I'm knowledge and understanding. I'm surprised you don't know about the Nemo. No, You're it's not a matter of that. I, I, didn't you say it's, to me that you thought the serious when they, the first piece that we ran? No, I, I'm saying that, that the they had, came from Sirius. I'm saying that that is part of what their belief system is. But I'm of the Who's same belief system. The Dogon. That they believe what? That the the the, uh, the God Nimrod, etc. Or you know that they that Nimrod was a human being. You, right. Live, live. That they believed in that. But you have to understand, well, especially. Why do you say that to Graham? No, because we're talking two different things. Now, so, I, we started off in the beginning when mm -hmm. I ran the first piece mm -hmm. about the, the gods coming from the serious mystery. Mm -hmm. We won't play it again for right. Graham, but he's always so, late. But he, here's That's one right. thing that I, I want to point out to you. That's right. Um, in the, from, it comes from the book Egypt, Science, and the Evolution of Consciousness, where it says, Eastern societies such as India and Africa do not have this problem 
between religion and science, because science and religion, philosophy and psychology, history and mythology, all are viewed as one reality and are closely interwoven into the fabric of daily life. That's the same thing I'm saying to you about what they believe with leprechauns. So, but we have to be able to discern <laughs> when aliens, that's not really, that's not part of what we're gonna believe. Um, so what I'm saying is culturally speaking, yeah, you can have that sort of statement coming out, but it doesn't make it true, doesn't make it accurate. And so, All right. you know, even if you make a claim, one thing we know in science, you know, there are a lot of claims with discovery now. What happens? Uh, a group in Australia says we did this in science. It has to be replicated. They have to be able to do it again. So. You can't just make a claim and not be able to prove it. That's the same way when we begin to talk about aliens something. Like, you gotta prove that. You know, we can prove the star system Sirius B, and we know that. But anyone who's gonna say that aliens brought this, now that's a, that's a heavy burden. How are you gonna prove that? You know what I mean? <laughs> that's, as I said, as it says here, a uh, lot of the, times, the especially Eastern, play, these, the these things are all interwoven. Folklore is yes. not fact. Right. Folklore is folklore, mm -hmm. yeah. and every culture has folk their folklore. Exactly. But it, and Africa is not immune from and that. Africa too, what? precisely. Yeah. And every yeah. African yeah. is not Egyptian. Right. And every mm -hmm. African is not the son mm -hmm. and daughter of a prince and a king. Right. All right. Right. It's folklore. So, right. Folklore is folklore, right. and we all have folklore. Right. We because, tell stories. We right. tell stories to our children. Whether you mm -hmm. want to talk about Santa Claus or you want to talk about the Tooth Fairy or right. Paul Bunyan mm -hmm. or John Henry, the steel driving man, mm -hmm. it's folklore. Right. So why are we talking about this? Because that it's a powerful thing folklore to... folklore now? No, it's not so much that, Winston. It's not that. <laughs> what we're saying is, is that look at this information, this knowledge that our people had long before all of this so-called technology. They you, were already... How did they get it the, again? You're telling me they star, sat down. We, we're talking star. about that they were they were star watchers. Observing. Ob observation. The Mayans. You know, they, they, there's a saying. You know, the when faced with a lot from. of possibilities, it's usually Mayans the, were the simplest thing. Hey, Mayans, just because they were stargazers, does not mean. Well, first, the Dogon were here long before the Mayans. They had right. they had a jump of hundreds of years on the Mayans, so, so it would make sense. Egyptians. It, no, but it would make sense that the Dogon had this information before the Mayan. How many people said at the last year that Ooh, the Mayan wow. calendar was going to be the end of the world? world. Exactly. Yeah, actually, we're still the year here. 2000 was right. the end. Right. What? You know? I mean, there were, there were things that they did that were great. You can't mm -hmm. knock it. Right. Fantastic stuff. Mm -hmm. But not correct in every way. Mm -hmm. no. Well, it doesn't mean the calendar wasn't correct. It just meant that for the calendar, they couldn't see anything past the year 2000. So the assumption began over to that, that that means the world would end. And of course, we know that that's people speculating. Just because they didn't see anything past the year 2000 just means that they couldn't see anything past the year just 2000. Just like you got some crazy crack, crackhead preachers that are mm -hmm. out there saying, Jesus is coming on this day. Right. Sell your house, mm -hmm. sell your car. Mm -hmm. Jesus hasn't come. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's... It is the simple fact that they're not speaking truth, they're not speaking factually. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a story they've made up, and it doesn't hold water. Right. Right. It's just, just that simple. We know that the Mayans' information is true because we verified it. That's what makes it science. That's the beauty of it. That part of what they understood and what they told us about this star system, about its orbit, its magnitude, the descriptions of it and all that. We know that the creation, to be true. creation of, this was the beginning of creation, the serious overall well, they, system. They, they, they're not maintaining it. Did you read it, about they, that? No. They don't maintain it. It's the beginning of creation. Because how could it be the beginning of, how could it be the beginning that of creation? That something had to create series B right. in order for it to be. Exactly. That's so not it couldn't the beginning be. of creation. Right. If it, if it couldn't it, be the alpha, exactly. It can't be the alpha. In, in that way. That would in. You know, that eats its own Creation self. starts with nothing, comes from nothing, nothing, into what is. Right. Right. So that, that couldn't be. But um, I'll go oh, back. This is fun. No, I, I go back to that to, um, to say that um, we do know that the information about the Sirius B system is factual, is true. You know, the conversation was more so about how did they have all of this information so in far advance of European society, Western culture, NASA, all of these. Because we consider now everything is supposed to be so high tech. We got these phones that they got uh, 10 
40 gigabytes of data they can hold before they more powerful than the computers that we had of 10 years ago. So we see ourselves as advancing technologically, scientifically more and more and more. But when we look at certain things, we realize that's not the case. We realize that certain information and knowledge about things we have is very adolescent and pales in comparison to some things from ancient times. They used to communicate across waterways, excuse me, across lakes. Sound travels five times louder through water than it does through air. Now, and the Dogon spoke of communicating to each other across a lake by projecting their voice into the water and the person could hear it on the other side. Jesus did the same thing preaching from a boat out on the Sea of Gennesaret to over 5,000 people. So there are things that the ancients knew that we mm -hmm. surely don't mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. all right? And we've gotten dumber over the years and we're now just starting to get a little <laughs> smarter. But they were operating with very basic instruments. They didn't have electricity and all the other stuff mm -hmm. that we have. So their, their understanding and their dependency and interrelationship with the earth and everything around them was much greater. We're more dependent. Matter of fact, uh, some people from, um, we're working on a documentary at Al Jazeera, mm -hmm. members of Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. said that they went to a rally mm -hmm. in, uh, near Grand Central Station mm -hmm. and their phones didn't work. <gasps> phones mm -hmm. didn't work. And I said, yeah, they shut the grid down. That. Yeah. That's well, it, up, shut the grid down. Yeah. So now your phone doesn't work and you're in a panic because mm -hmm. your phone doesn't work. Well, Martin Luther King didn't have a cell phone, did he? <laughs> no, exactly. Okay. I said, you all need to understand how to operate from the basics. You're too dependent upon the instruments and the machines. Now, if you mm -hmm. can learn, remember Malcolm X in the mm -hmm. movie? He just pointed. He just <laughs> pointed. All right. You need to have some hand signals. What did the Native Americans do to communicate? Didn't they use smoke signals? Yes, they did. They didn't have telephones. All right? So there are very basic things that one can do to offset the lack of. How do I get around this? What, See, are, you, what are you trying to say? What I'm saying is the ancient people were not stupid. They were smart. They observed. They made an observation. And the question is, how can I get past this? With how all your analogy, you're that? dead wrong, and we'll prove it. <laughs> you can't. You haven't proved <laughs> it. I will prove it. Well, I don't have the material I had. To, uh, it'll, it'll come to pass. And not a theory. You need fact, <laughs> not <mind>. theory. <laughs> Graham, you don't know Theories what you're talking about. I mean, this count. is a good argument for you. It's Welcome a, home. That's wonderful. I'm and glad to be here. you've been to be, you a come back and you're really theory is not there. fact. Beverly, come get them. <laughs> It's not a fact. <laughs> there are a lot of theories, but there are, it can't be a theory. The point has to is, be a this fact. has been established that the Nemos brought the Sirius system to the Dogon. So I don't know why you didn't know this. No, because that's that's not really you. no, Graham. I mean, no, and that's not that's not that's not. I accurate. thought you read the book. I, I, not only have I, I not only have I read the book, but as I, I said, I have the information right here in front of me. Certain things that I just what I believe has happened. It's a misinter you misinterpreted um, what the Dogon have said because of their tendency in most Eastern cultures to influx science, spirituality, religion, these things in together. Well, if I had a chance to run this video, uh, I wouldn't have to argue with either one of you. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually, he's arguing. The, you know. Uh, he's arguing. Uh, We're talking, you know, he's arguing. Uh, you know, you guys but, are, but are not even this, off. I'm but even even you. even in but here. But as usual. But, but look, but don't I, be surprised. I, let's, you let's know I don't this. believe in that. In yeah. that. I, I believe. Know, I believe in I creation. I, I believe in God. I believe in God the Creator. Well, mm -hmm. I, and I believe in creating God. You, uh, yeah, what are you're, you're talking about well, who? I'm telling you, Nemo. The Nemo. Of <laughs> okay. Nemo. No, no uh, Nemo. You can't play that video. Help him out. Get that thing up so he can stand on something. Come on. Well, I stand on what I do. Right here at the Gilchrist Experience. Welcome, Graham, back. He always gives a challenging thought here and there. <laughs> but I thought I had my professor who said he. Oh, so he you think you, you, you did gang up on me? You, you no. brought him in here to gang up on me. See, he said he thought. I know what you don't believe. 
Okay. I thought I could teach you something today, but you haven't, <laughs> I'm, you've been I'm, away too long. I am not learning mythology. <laughs> well, we're talking about... I'm talking about facts. Ancient Egyptian history. History the beginnings of creation. History and myths uh, let me see are if I two can different things. B.T. Coleman has plenty of video on this. And, mm -hmm. uh, history but, and myth are two different well, things. Well, we'll prove but, you wrong, Graham. But, but more so, yeah. Yeah, 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 a lot I of mean, people out there like you, Graham. You got <laughs> all your good. fans and you That's <laughs> good. I, I don't live for fans. <laughs> you know, I don't live for fans. They should call up on all sorts of stuff. You're, you're going off on a tangent, whatever's going on in your no, head. No, you don't believe in extraterrestrials. No, I don't. I know that. I don't. Well, not, not in terms of the well, I'm human race. About the, not in terms of the human I'm race. I'm talking about the Dogons. <laughs> don't believe in it. And the serious mystery. You believe in a, you know the serious mystery Yes, exists. a mystery. You know what a mystery is. Well, okay. it's, a, it's mystery. a mystery to Ethi uh, not Europeans is a mystery to because they can't figure out how this African tribe ever figure out how to look at the solar system but, and study the stars mm -hmm. where you can't see it. And they but, describe what a dwarf star is. That, and that's it. The thing that they, they can describe, describe this dwarf this and its orbit. Looks like. But and, here's the thing, Winston. The part about them figuring out how they could see it, no, they, they're no longer I'm in... I'm talking about the size of the, yeah, that's the what, matter right. and what the matter was like. Right. How and did the, they find all this out? And they By have, observing yeah. the, the star? Yeah. I mean, part of why it, would yeah, you part even of say it, you that? can come to observation, some observation. You can tell the gravitational pull of a, of a planet? Nope, but you can, there's other things that you that can understand. That is a dwarf star. Why would the ancients know about dwarf okay. stars? Because they, that's what I'm going to, we're going to, I'm going to go into explaining to you. You don't have to, you can get a lot of information about this just from observing. Because, say for you example, you can tell what a dwarf star. Is you can, yeah, you can deduce things star. scientifically for, from a physics point, especially with a, a companion star next to it. Which is okay, which yes, is because ten I, times brighter than the sun. First of all, it's much smaller and more dense. And the fact is, when the, the companion star moved, that's when they realized they were two of them together. Because of the the density of one, they couldn't be in but so much distance to one another. That way, you can then plot out how far this is, this orbit, or, you know, how far away it must be. That's observation. But you must have a very uh, detailed understanding of science and, and, and math. What about and, the description? And you have to, and we understand that the high priest, this is not layman knowledge. When we talk about the Dogon and the start, we're not saying that every Dogon understood or knew this. No, but only, and we're, we're only talking the high about priest. the high it's a secret. and peace. So, they, right. They keep it secret. secret. Exactly. So, what those about the people, celebrations of the orbit of Sirius B, the gravitational I mean, pull on. Serious A and B. Yeah, and keeping the solar system in balance. Well, I'm not saying that that's what it was doing. It was not keeping the solar system in balance. I mean, they knew a lot about the solar system, the Milky well, Way galaxy, but it we'll wasn't so in much a, a, a specialist on the serious yeah. mysteries. So, well, this, this, you're talking about our, our solar yeah. system. Yeah. Yeah. No, the universe. Now, okay, the universe. Well, because you said the solar <laughs> the universe. system. That's why, I'm, that's why I'm getting clarification. I, I, I got mm -hmm. to, you, from solar system to universe. Okay, okay. These are all facts that I can prove, even to my brother over here. You know, he's <laughs> argumentative. He has a lot of history of being argumentative. But, but so I take on the challenge. So come to me. I'm talking. God, Beverly, come home. Wait. Oh, so where is she if she's not home now? She's home. Where is she? Home here. Uh. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. You only uh. have friends when you need them, huh? Uh, this has been interesting. I'm glad that we have these little interchanges, you know, mm -hmm. it's something different than what's going on out there. Uh, we all know about the, mm -hmm. the nut on uh, downtown Manhattan, uh, Ali Akbar, you know, you, you believe in God and you kill people. Uh, it, it's confusion there. God means love and, and love is what we have to prepare ourselves for. Because with all this insanity running around, um, hey, God help us. <laughs> As we see, there's a, a, a real discussion here, and I'm glad we have diverse opinions. Mm -hmm. As well. <laughs> <laughs> as bad as it can be. <laughs> but I take on the challenge, and next week we're going to have a, a true professor.
Uh, like, oh. <laughs> hey, I'm the one who's a He told me he understood what I do. we were going to talk just, about. But just my understanding but I had differs you on with here you. so you could convince Graham. You didn't tell me that's what this was about. Why? Why? I thought you he told me he truth? wanted me to talk about the Serious B system. I, I didn't know it was a setup for you. You understand? It wasn't a setup. You were proving to no, Graham what proved to a lot of the people out there. I'm just trying yeah. to show you some truth. E and with all mm. this, we thank you, gentlemen, for giving no me a, problem. a confrontation <laughs> that I'm truly enjoying. I, I'll just, this is it's on tape. <laughs> Let me just say this also, Winston, if you, when you check out the book, check out page 37. The Dogun. Is that on the yeah, Serious Mystery? Talk, yeah, there? and they talk about That's the Dogun the described as have, yeah. men with horns and men with, with, with wings. So these are not even so much you aliens. These are really sort of mythology. Myth mythological yeah. creatures, we're which go creatures back to the point where which we were saying. Uh, we're all creatures <laughs> of the universe, and uh, thank you for coming. The God in me loves the God in you. And stay tuned for more exciting topics of... Uh, Nemo. Nemo. Extraterrestrials coming from the serious mystery. God bless. Stay tuned for more. Power to the people. God bless. And here they said, it's not the Dogun said that 